So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So we're continuing with uh, volume 30, 530, 1932. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Well, so we get Blessed Daughter Louisa, Blessed Daughter of my Divine Will. Each act of the creature done in my Divine Will is a step. Huh? What? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just see. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, where is it now? 124. Let me just see. Okay, I've got the wrong, I've got the wrong talk. Sorry about that. Hold on just one second. Let me see if I can find where we are. Um, this is part three, right? Okay, August, August. It disappeared, it's gone. Okay, hold on. This is August, you know, the book. Yeah, God is good. Okay. Okay, let me look over here. Isn't it hilarious? Okay, hold on. Let's see. August, 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 part three. Okay. I guess that would be page. For me, it's page six. I, I understand. I understand, which is for me, it's page six. Okay, hold on one second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before that. Okay, we found it. Thanks, thanks for your prayers. Okay, here we go. Ready? Again, we're only a few minutes late. All right. So it starts on volume 30, 124, 1932. It can be said that Mother Earth is the nourishment and the life of the flower. So when people say Mother Earth, it's not evil, okay? Just so that you know, Jesus used this uh, this term, but he, he shows us that Mother Earth is not in charge as, as we hear, you know, those that um, um, use Mother Earth. So Mother Earth is the nourishment and the life of the flower. So when, 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 when we hear people say certain things, we don't have to get upset by what they're saying because what we will hear, you know, a lot of times Jesus uses the same terms, but a different terminology. He, he explains it more thoroughly. So it is for the soul who lives in our divine will. Okay, so now he's explaining. We, triumph God, must give the soul a place in our house more than a mother to nourish the soul, to raise the soul, to give the soul so much grace for her to be able to bear and remain exposed to uh, from outside and from within. So this is the other thing that God is doing. He's changing our interior and our exterior. Everything in us is changing. Um, we're going to have a glorified body. I mean, that's what Jesus promises uh, in the new era. But we, 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 our soul has to be glorified as well. So this is what we're working on now. We can't really work on the body. Uh, I think the Pope said 
uh, when he first became Pope, he said, uh, you know, people are spending more money on makeup than on nuclear weapons. You know, so what happens is we try, even in, even in the funeral homes, we walk in, we go, doesn't he look alive? No, no, he's pretty much gone. <laughs> you know, so, it, so Jesus wants to change our inside and our outside. And, and he's right now changing our inside. What we've learned all our life is the way of the world. And even though we might have went to a Catholic school and taught by wonderful nuns, uh, we, we've been brought up by the way of the world. Television is our, is our God, mostly. We, we obey the television. Uh, you know, what God says, keep holy the Sabbath. As Catholics, we have to begin to keep holy the Sabbath. So Sunday is not another Saturday. It's the Lord's Day. And if we keep holy the Lord's day, everything else goes well. Everything else goes well. Our interior life goes well. And we begin to think uh, with the mind of Christ. So this is what Jesus is saying. Everything, inside and without, out, outside, everything in us is being changed. And the, the interior life is, is basically based on our prayer. Uh, a lot of people pray, you know, when they're pleading for God, pleading for something, and they keep on repeating, please, 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 please. And I had somebody just recently call me up, and she was always talking to me about God is good, and we trust God. We, she's furious. I'm not praying anymore, she said. I've been praying all my life, and God isn't answering my prayer. And, you know, I mean, that's what, that's what, what can happen. It's a, it's, I got to pray, I've got to pray, I've got to pray, and God's going to answer my prayer. And they don't see anything, and they get furious with God. I had another friend of mine while she was dying. Uh, I said, you got to forgive everybody. She said, no, I'm not going to forgive them. What they did to me, what they did to my family. The, the heck with them, or something like that. And, and she died without forgiveness. And I told her, I said, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time in purgatory, if you don't forgive, and that's for every thought, every word, every deed. And she says, well, they, they are the ones that have done all this. And it's like this anger that has filled her. She went to daily mass. She wore, she wore the scapular. She prayed the rosary every single day. But she was filled with, with anger. So Jesus wants to change that in us. And, and we have to become docile. And we have to learn from him how he does this, how he changes us. So he says, this is, what, this is the way it's done, with an ardent light for the immensity of our most holy divine will. This light of God, this life of God, this love of God is what God is asking us to dive into, diving into this infinite ocean of love. And some days you're, you're not going to feel the best to say, Jesus, I trust in you. But this is what we have to discipline ourselves to do. When, when Jesus said, I am going to... Um, uh, give you divine mercy, basically. Uh, he said, it's the final devotion that I give to my church before I return. So by praying the divine mercy every day, what that does is it helps us understand Jesus is in charge, I'm not. And if we're going through something and he's not answering our prayer, there's got to be a reason. And so he's, he's asking us, he's pleading with us to allow him to uh, have this great change that he wants done happen in us. So in volume 30, 130, 1932, I was following the acts of the divine fiat. See, this is the acts of the divine fiat. What is that? It's everything that God has done. You know, with creation, the sun, the moon, the stars, he thought of us before he created anything. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the animals, the vegetables, the minerals, he, everything around us is that I love you for us. So here she is, I was following the acts of the divine fiat, and it seemed to me that in each of its acts, I followed and prepared for me, it's blowing breath of love. The divine I love you is in everything. And what we have to get through our thick skulls is everything around us is not just a leaf on a tree, but it's an I love you. Every blade of grass is an I love you. And we have to enter into this, I, I love you. And Jesus says, I will use your human senses 
so that you will enter into this gift with your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth. He wants to use our senses to begin to embrace God. And, and I can tell you, well, some days when you get up, you don't want to, you know, have a smile on your face. You know, it's like, oh, you know, but what God is showing you is you have to understand where you are. You're on earth in this, and he says this, this divine love, this breath of love is all, all the way, are always around us. And he's asking us, become attentive. Become attentive to all the I love yous. It's not, you know, some people smile when they look at their Maserati. We, we smile when we look at a leaf on a tree. A bug, you know, we got to kill these bugs, you know. And in the divine will, see, this is another thing, God gives us the power that Adam lost. He was the commander of the earth. He was the king of the earth. And when, when a bug was someplace where it should be, he'd say, no, you got to go. You, you got it. And it, and it works. I, I remember when I was in, at, back in the 90s in uh, Texas, we were talking about this. I think it was around Dallas. And this one lady says, I have all these wasps. They're all over my house. I, I said, command them to go. And she goes, yeah, command them to go. And I use every type of raid I train. <laughs> and so she did that. And then when I saw her the next year, she says, you're not going to believe this. She says, I said, go. And they left. I said, in the name of Jesus, as in the command of Adam, leave. You, you, you have to understand the power that God's going to give you. And it's not me. It's not, you're not supposed to just watch this. <laughs> But the power God is going to give you is his command. See, we, we are to be kings again. We're to be queens again. Why? He's going to clothe us in divine nobility. That's what he tells Louisa. And Adam was naked. Why? He got rid of this divine will. And God says, I want to clothe you. Now, tomorrow we're going to um, bless the veils, the chapel veils. Because they can become sacramentals. And sacramentals, the sacrament and sacramentals are very important to us. I mean, I'm wearing a relic of St. Michael uh, from the cave of St. Michael. And why? He, he says, wherever that, those, that, that relic is, I am there. He wants us to, God wants us to participate in the divine. We, we would receive Holy Communion. It's the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus and Mary. When Jesus was on the cross and he said to the Blessed Mother, woman, the, the Protestants say, oh, Jesus just called Mary a woman. She didn't say anything about anything else. Woman was the same words that Adam said to Eve. You are flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. When Jesus said, woman, I am flesh of your flesh, bone of your bone, blood of your blood, so when we go to Holy Communion, we also receive Our Lady. The two can never be separated. The new Adam and the new Eve. So God is trying to get us ready to have a devotion, not only to, to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, but Mary. I have one picture that I got at ordination of uh, the priest holding up the chalice. And right next to him is the Blessed Mother holding, holding the priest. As, as the priest is holding Jesus. It's, it's very important that we understand it's much, much more than, than what we can imagine. This is what he says. This blowing breath of love is all around us. We gotta breathe that in. And within itself, and long to and un unleashed from itself to make it a prisoner inside my little soul. So here, this divine I love you wants us to be one with, it, with God. He's love. He's pure love. That's, that's what the divine will is. The divine will is love. And why does Jesus say to Louisa, no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity, no more doubting? Because that's against love. And, and what Jesus is trying to teach us is to live a life of love, no longer a life of misery. That's the human will. But a life of love, that's God's holy divine will. And Louisa says, and I feeling this love 
For within its same love, unleash my love, this is Jesus, toward the soul who would so much loved me and I, Jesus, long for in its new blowing of breath of love to say to with more intense affection, I love you. See, that, that's, that's our prayer. Um, St. Francis says, if you pray and are not filled with joy, you are not praying. So our prayer life isn't gimme, 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 gimme. That's what most prayers are. He's not answering my prayer. He's not giving me what I want. No, it's 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 to enter into the I love you. Uh, entering into that I love you is the healing power of God. He's he knows exactly what you need, but it's his prayer in us that we pray. It's it's when 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 Louisa prays, you listen to her prayers, it's always one with Jesus. Fused with Jesus. It's not doing the will of God, but living in the will of God. That's what God is asking of us. So this more intense a, a affection of I love you, this, this is what we're entering into. So that, so that at the point of death, we can say to Jesus, I love you. Knowing death is the door to the Trinity. Death, he conquered death. He took upon us our, himself our death. We don't have to die. And that's what it says. Uh, I love watching near-death experiences. Why? Because they show me more of heaven. They show me more of God's love. They show me that death is a door. It's nothing to be terrified of. It's not, it's not doom and gloom. Death for the devil is eternal death. No life. He's denied God. And that's why he's screaming. And that's why he stinks, is because he's rotting. He's, he's denied God. He's denied life. He's denied love. He's denied this, this life that God offered to him. And he said, no. So God is, the, the, the battle is going on. It's going to get worse. And this is why we're, we prayed yesterday, St. Michael. Today we're going to do another. It's a deliverance prayer after Mass. Why? What's coming is so amazing that we are going to be peaceful, joyful, and happy. When, when, when we see what's coming, everyone is going to be pulling their hair out, screaming and being terrified, except us. Why? Jesus is teaching us. You know, death, he's conquered. The, the glorified body, we're going to have. You know, what? somebody says, well, I have to wear makeup. And I said, yes, Mother Teresa always looked good in her lipstick. <laughs> she looks so beautiful. <laughs> and we getting old, somebody says to me, to shave your beard, grow, you know, cut your hair, dye your hair. Why? You know, I don't understand it. Life is, I can't wait for heaven. I can't wait for the new body. And, and don't tell God what kind of a body you want. Because <laughs> if, if my, my luck, if I said I want to be taller, I said I want to be six foot, and I die, and we go into the kingdom, everybody's going to be eight foot. You know? <laughs> so don't, don't tell God what you want. You say, Let it be a surprise. God, see, God is, he's always joking with us. He's, the Lord is just, he's just so much fun. He's always playing games with us. He always answers our prayer. I, I mentioned this once before. I said, the kids down the street, they were all blondes. When I was born, I was a blonde. And I, and I one day I was just driving, you know, it kind of be nice to be a blonde again. I said, Lord, I'd like to be blonde again. And I'm driving through Texas, it was in the 70s. And uh, I looked at my arm out the window and all the hair in my arm is blonde. And I said, you are so funny. <laughs> He answered my prayer, but I mean, he's in charge, not us. You know, our, our, our Lord, get, get to know his humor. And the best way you can get to know his humor is by looking in the mirror. <laughs> so, he, 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 he just loves us so much. He loves us so much. 
And all that he asks of us is let him be our God. Get to know him in his humor. Get to know him. He, he's, he, he's playing with, his, with us as little children. He delights in us. And, and when we strive for him, it's this perfection that he wants of us begins little by little. Nobody's perfect. We, and he shows us that by having us go to confession each week. He wants us to be like him. He wants us to be in his image and likeness. And that's why he gave us the book of heaven. As you read, you, you begin to live this divine I love you. It's all around you. And, and you know, he, he loves us so much. He, he's got so much. So it seems to me that he said that the desire of the divine will to be loved is so great that in it itself places in the soul and does uh, of its love to make itself be loved. And it waits for the love of the creature to be able to say to her, how happy I am that you love me. That, that's, that's why I said, fall in love with our Eucharistic Lord. He's a prisoner of love. He's, he's here is God Almighty. Uh, appearing to us, looking like bread, tasting like bread. Why? <clears throat> he wants to be part of us. He wants to be our nourishment, our food. <clears throat> when, when you go in, when you adore God, use those 15 minutes of an hour and break it up into 15 things each, each 15 minutes. You know, find something that you can say to him, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, I bless you, I adore you, I worship you. 15 things in your own life 15 things, 15 people that have helped you, 15 uh, uh, mysteries, 15 uh, I love yous. And the hour goes by in a minute because now you're, you're, you're conversing with him and he's showing you, what about this? What about that? See, so falling in love with God is so essential so that when you walk into church, you just don't bounce off your knee you genuflect and you say, Lord, you're my Lord. You're my master. You're my king. You're my God. You're my all. I, I owe everything to you. And thank you for letting me be here. It's to recognize that he is your Lord. And what he's going to ask you to do, it might be difficult, uh, but it's going to be glorious. And that you have to have that that understand inside and outside of how God, God is treating you, what he wants you uh, to, to do. And what he wants you to do is to fall in love with him. He's already fallen in love, fall in love with us. Look at creation. Look at redemption. Everything out there is an I love you to us. And he says, I want you to be with me eternally. By 32, 32, 10, 1932. What I did in redemption, my works, my pains, my tears, and everything else are isolated. Now, who forms the company for our divine works, Jesus says, the one who recognizes them and praying their rounds within them. So as, as you, let's say, for example, mosquitoes, you know, you know, how can you thank God for mosquitoes? You know? Well, you can, you can find natural ways of getting rid of them. But also, I, my, my scout master, I remember, we were walking through the woods, and, he, you know, and we're all hot and sweaty. And he's walking ahead of us, leading us, and his whole back is covered with mosquitoes. And we're, we're trying to dust them off him, you know, as he's walking. He says, oh, don't do that. They're not going to hurt me. And we went, they're not going to. What does, has he ever been bit before? You know, what's wrong with this guy? So the next day we're out swimming and he says, do you see any mosquito bites on my back? And we went, no. He says, they don't harm you. I mean, where did that come from? How did he know that? But it really taught us that yes, they might be, uh, that's, how, that's what we consider uh, uh, the evil ones, the mos like mosquitoes, they're just little gnats, you know? And not to be upset. <clears throat> goodness, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How? Are we going to do? It's just a gnat. It's just a mosquito. You have to understand, they have denied life, and they're going to try to make us annoyed, 
And it's like, no, God is in charge. And if we can walk through the forest, as my scoutmaster did, his name was Mr. Stone. <laughs> I, I never thought of that until just now. We can walk through life with mosquitoes all around us and it's not going to bother us. You have to understand, God, God loves us. We're his children. And he says, he's, this is what he says to Louisa. The little children of the Holy Divine Well, listen to this, are my most precious of all children. Why? He's giving us what he didn't give to the saints. It wasn't time. It's like Moses. You know, he loved Moses, but it wasn't time to give him the Blessed Sacrament. Or the, or, or the sacramentals. It wasn't time for that. But he gave it to the saints. And now God has given to us this great gift of the divine will. It's time. And we're going to see it. We're going to see time come to an end. And what does that mean? It's the, when Jesus was on the cross and he says it is finished. Well, by the word that he used finished was that the debt has been paid. When time comes to an end, it's finished. What does that mean? The debt has been paid. The 6,000 years. Adam listened to Lucifer through his wife. What, what Jesus is showing us is the debt has been paid. That's why time is coming to an end. The 6,000 years is over. And why? The 7,000th year is the new day. And that's what John Paul do. He kept on telling us, get ready for the third millennium, get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. The new beginning is here. That's why even the, 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 C, uh, the CD that came out from Corrado, the dawn of a mystery, there's a new beginning that's happening. And even before we, we started this retreat, the Vatican said, everything's ready. Now, we need the miracles for her beatification. So God's going to produce miracles with this group. Why? The church, see, we, everybody would say, I don't see any miracles. I don't see any. Well, now's the time for the miracles. Well, there are certain stages that had to be done. What happened two days ago, it's done. Now the miracles. Wait till you see the miracles that are going to come. God's in charge of this. Not people in the Vatican. God's in charge. So good things are right around the corner. It's very, very clear. It's very, very clear. So Jesus says, the one who recognizes them, the, the, the I love yous, the one that's praying their rounds within them. See, praying the rounds are the most important thing. Like, like last night when we went through the night evening prayer, you know, some people go, why are you saying this over and over and over and over and over? It's, it's, it's a mantra. Your, your, your brain later on says, I love you and I praise you. I love you and I thank you. I love you and I worship you. I love you and I desire you. It's what we, what God is getting us ready. So then when we're outside and you see a flower, you go, isn't that nice? It's no, I love you and I praise you. I love you and I thank you. This is an I love you to us. God, everything in creation is an I love you. So when we begin to pray the rounds, we are praying the way Jesus prayed. He's always saying to the Father, I love you and I thank you. I love you and I worship you. I love you and I glorify you. And it's in every aspect. It's that, that, see, every word that came from the rounds came from the book of heaven. There's nothing in it that came from the saints. This is how Louisa prayed. Jesus taught her how to pray the way he prayed. Jesus taught her how to, how to pray the way Mary prayed. Jesus taught her how to pray the way Adam prayed before the fall. Everything was an I love you to God. To recognize everything around us is that I love you. You know, that, that's the thing. Uh, everything is an I love you. And I, I remember years ago when I was in a rectory, um, they, uh, I said, what can I say to God that no one's ever said thank you for? I love you. And I'm thinking and thinking. I looked under my bed. It's all filled with dust. I said, I thank you for the dust. <laughs> I mean, because I was, I was happy because I don't think anybody ever thanked you for the dust. It's 
Think of, think of a way to thanking God, praising God, loving God, glorifying God, worshiping God, that maybe nobody has said. I mean, really get into all the I love yous that are out there. I can guarantee you everybody hasn't said anything yet. When the kingdom comes, that beautiful harmony of I love you is going to be all around us. It's going to be God saying it to us first, I love you in this and that. And we say to God, I love you in this and that. It's, it's the breathing in. God breathes it to us. I, and I love you. We breathe back to God, a divine I love you. The divine will is different. He teaches us how to pray. Right now we know how to pray the way the pray, saints pray. Oh, I want to be just like St. Francis. I want to be just like St. Ignatius. I want to be just like St. Teresa. I can't put down these books so that the saints have taught us. Well, in the divine will, you can, because Jesus is teaching us how he prayed. Mary is teaching us how she prayed. See, it's not just being, I want to be like St. Francis. I don't want to, I want to be like St. Saint, Saint Michael. It's I want to be a reflection and image of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. I want their DNA in me. That's what the rounds are. And as you begin the rounds, it might seem tedious at first. But what happens is as you start saying this, I love you continuously, you become happy. That, that's what, love is happiness. Love is beauty. It's love is, 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 is God. And that's why he says, that's why he says, I, I, the, uh, who does this? The one who recognizes the divine I love you is all around me. Praying their rounds within them finds the divine love palpitating for the soul, longing for her company in order to give and to receive love. It's the breathing. We breathe one with God. So much so that when you pray your round in our divine will to find our works with every leaf on a tree, every blade of grass, every grain of sand, every drop of water, and to recognize our divine love placed around you, that's the rounds. I, God, feel so drawn that I am almost always waiting for you in each work, waiting for you to enjoy your company, waiting for you for your cortege, and I feel as though repaid for what I did and suffered. And when some, sometimes you delay your coming, I am waiting. He waits for you in the Holy Blessed Sacrament. He waits for you in the Eucharist. He wants to look at you. He wants you to look at him. He waits for you. And I put myself on the lookout from inside my divine works to see when you are about to come, so as to enjoy your sweet company. Therefore, be attentive. Don't make me wait. That's why I said yesterday, when you go to Holy Mass, are you there early to talk to him? Not for fellowship, but to talk to him. In, in almost every church in, in, in Europe, it says silencio, especially in Italy. Be silent. God's talking. He talks in silence. Listen to him. Talk to him. Be with him. Look at him. It's, it's very, very important that, that we... See, the catechism has been basically tossed out. You know, in, in my diocese, when Bishop Sheen was there, they, they did that on purpose almost. They just said, we're not using the Baltimore catechism. And the people said, God is love. God is love. God is love. God loves you. God loves you. God is love. God, that's all they talked about. There was no depth. And after a while, well, God, God loves me. I'm going to heaven. I can do what I want. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to pray. God loves me. See, it's, it's the, the lie of the evil one is to distort the truth. So what has Jesus done? He's given us the catechism in the book of heaven. As you read the book of heaven, you're going to become more Catholic than you could ever imagine. Why? It's all there. And it's Jesus who's teaching. It's, it's just so astonishing. It's so amazing. Be attentive, Jesus says. Don't make me wait. 5.33, 20, 1932. 
my daughter, to know my divine will is the greatest thing that I, God, can give and that that creature can receive. The greatest gift is to know the divine will. And the culmination of this gift, if you want to say, is the illumination of conscience, to know who God is and who you are. That's what's coming. So to give you uh, uh, an understanding of what's happening, he's given you the book of heaven. You're gonna be ready for the illumination of conscience. It's, you're, you're gonna fall flat on your face when you see it, but, but you're gonna be ready. Some people, are, there's, it's gonna be the shock of their life, who they are and who God is. Because they don't, they don't know God and they don't know themselves. And so God is trying to teach us, get ready for what I'm going to do. Why the book of heaven at this time? Because we need it more than ever. Why 20 mysteries uh, that the Pope has given us for not just the 15 mysteries, of the Holy Rosary, but 20. We need more prayer than ever before. Why is, is the blue law on Sunday? Why is it gone? Because we need more prayer than ever. In the, the, the stores are filled on Sunday. What is God saying? Keep holy the Sabbath. You know, if, if you need gas on Sunday, there's something wrong with you. Because you should have got the gas on Saturday. Why? Not on Sunday. I'm not going to travel on Sunday. So people say, well, I'm not going to cook. Let's go out to dinner. On Sunday? Making those people work for you on Sunday? keeping them at jobs on Sunday when it's a holy day, it's the Lord's day. No, you, you, gotta, you gotta make Sunday the, the, the day of rest. What's the rest day? It's the seventh day, the day of rest. It's the Lord's day, the day of rest. That's what's coming. The seventh millennium is coming. A day will be like a thousand years, a thousand years will be like a day. We're on overtime right now because it happened in the year 2000. A new beginning is coming for all of humanity. And God is going to take the ones that love him with him. That's why Jesus said the road to hell is very wide and many travel it. The road to heaven is very narrow and few find it. So we want God. So he said, I give you the book of heaven. Jesus said that to Louisa. Anybody who has the book of heaven, I gave it to them. It doesn't matter what human gave it to you. I planned this from the beginning of time. That's what, that's what God has done. Do we thank him? Do we praise him? Do we glorify him? Do we love him more? The book of heaven, I, I, like I had my, my priest friend, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, uh, he's got two doctorates in, in philosophy. And uh, I said, what, is this, what does this mean to you? And I showed him a, 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 a a writing from the passage in, in the 36th volume. And he read it and he looked at me and he says, humans don't think like this. I said, then he says, a human didn't write this. And I said, well, who wrote it? He says, God. And I said, you're absolutely right. God dictated this to Louisa. I mean, think about it. This is the language of heaven. God is teaching you the language of heaven. You're learning the language of heaven as you read. God is teaching you. And at first, when you read, don't be a stick in the mud saying, I'm not moving until I understand what this means. I have had people say that, and they, leave, they lose the divine will. You, you keep on reading. Three pages later, God explains what you read. Why? He, you're, you're, you're trusting in him. It's not you're trying to not try to figure out with your human brain, but God's teaching you. And you get to this point, you go, oh, that's what you meant by that. See, it's, he's, he's, he, it, but if we're, if we do things on our own, separate from God, we're not going to get very far. It's always docility. It's always surrender. It's always submission. These are words that are hated mostly by women. It is true. That's how feminism is. Feminism is what Eve went through. It's not true feminism. True feminism is Our Lady. True feminism is Louisa. So we're, what God is asking us to do is to act like Our Lady, act like our, our Louisa. 
filled with peace, joy, and happiness, submissive, dastasal, surrender to God. See, you know, the, you know what the salute to God is when, when he comes to you? It's, I give up. You know, <laughs> you're in charge. I don't want to be in charge anymore. You don't have to be the screaming maniac at home. Because that's, that's you're in charge. And it doesn't really work too well. But when, when God is working in your life, it's, it's the docility of Our Lady, the surrender of Our Lady. It's, it's what Jesus taught Louisa. You remember when she said to Jesus, I want to be a nun. Jesus said, you'll be my nun. 40 years later, she says, I think you didn't hear what I said. I want to be a nun. And you could tell I'm not a nun. She says, you are. You're my littlest nun in the littlest convent. You're bad. That's what he says to Louisa. Read just, it's the divine will is filled with everything. God has got great plans for each and every one of us. And you don't have to wear a uniform to be part of it. God is going to take care of it. He's got everything planned. He loves us so much. He says, my divine will, this is, is the greatest thing that I, God, can give. It's the greatest thing that a creature can receive. When, when people say, why are you reading the divine will? It's the greatest thing. You know, it is, it is. Why? Jesus told me that. It's reigning is the confirmation of its greatest gift. When you are filled with peace, joy, and happiness, it's the confirmation that this is the greatest gift. The worry, the fear, the anxiety, the complaints, the negativity is gone. The same thing where you would, you know, get upset is gone. The same thing, God will show you the same thing, you know, I used to get really upset when that, that was sad or this was done. Now it's fiat. God's in charge. It's the reigning and the confirmation of his greatest gift, carrying out of its will uh, that was known by us. We begin to understand what God is doing. Therefore, first it is necessary to ask for the divine will. This is what we do. Every morning when we do our prevenient act, Every thought, word, and deed that I do today be done in the divine will. I want to do everything in the most holy divine will to call upon the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. Now, I, I've seen people with a prevenient act as like two pages of prevenient act. If you, if you look at May 27th, uh, well, May 27th, 1922, and volume. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Um, it's one paragraph. It's one paragraph. And, and in that paragraph, Jesus is going to teach you how he is asking you to pray. And so when you pray in the morning, you, 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 you pray that paragraph, basically, and then he adds on to it. What about this? What about that? And, and your whole morning, when you wake up, as soon as you wake up, becomes an act of, of, of love towards our creator, our God. And this is, this is what's so beautiful. Each one of us is going to say something different. There's no formulas in the divine will. There's, well, how do we do this? What do we do? Read. Well, what do we do? Read. Well, how are we going to do this? Read. God will teach you. It's each one of us, like for example, when God says the word red, think of a think of a red object. Each of us thinks of something different. Some think of an apple or a tomato or, or a strawberry or a cherry or a fire truck. You know, we think of something different. Why? He loves our uniqueness. You're going to pray in a way that I can never pray because of your uniqueness. So learn how Jesus is teaching you. You know, we've memorized the prayers of the saints. Now Jesus says, let me teach you. You know, some people are more uh, attuned to music. Some people are more attuned to math. Some people are more attuned to uh, the dirt and, on the earth. They, they know it more than anything. God will speak to them in that way. 
I, I don't know these things, but God knows what you have to learn, the way you were created by him. How do we do this? Read. How do we live this? Read. Let Jesus teach you. And if you can't read, listen. There's a lot of this on the internet. Listen to the divine will. Repeat. What, what's God doing? He's telling us in every word, I love you, I love you, I love you. So first, it's necessary to ask for the divine will. By asking for the divine will, the soul disposes of itself. The soul forms within herself the royal palace in which to receive this gift. And by asking for it, she acquires the divine love in order to love it. She acquires the divine quality of sacrifice that are needed in order to possess it. And as one asks for the divine will, the human will itself loses its ground. The human will is debilitated. The human will loses the strength and disposes itself to receive the dominion and the supreme volition. And God, listen to this, seeing himself prayed to, disposes himself to give this gift of gifts. Second is necessity, the more indispensable than the first. In order to obtain this kingdom, it is necessary to know that one can have it. This is for you, the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And that's without the devil. The devil has to flee. The devil's been banished from heaven. He'll be banished from earth. The third, necess necess third necess necessity means to know that God wants to give this kingdom. The, this lays the foundation, the sure hope, in order to obtain the kingdom. And it forms the final preparation in order to receive the kingdom of my most holy divine will. And when a good is wanted, when a good is longed for, to know that the one who can give it is, it already wants to give it, it can be called the last striking blow and the final act to obtain what is wanted. This is your gift and God wants to give it to you. It's our gift, it's humanity's gift. And the, the illumination of conscience is gonna show whether or not we have, this is what we want, or your Lamborghini, one of the two. It's got to be things of earth or things of heaven. And what God wants is he wants to give you the things of heaven that will never, ever, ever end. See then how necessary it is that it be known, I can give the kingdom of my divine will, and that I, God, want to give the kingdom of my divine will. I can say that it enters the same necessity as that of making known that I, Jesus, was the Son of God who came upon earth. Redemption and now sanctification is the third fiat. And yet, true uh, that many in knowing this shall repeat what they did to me when I made myself known as the longed for Messiah with calumnies, contradictions, doubts, suspicion, scorn. Some people hate the divine will, as you've seen over this past year. As indeed they have done, and already, as soon as the beginning of the printing shows signs of making the divine will known, the devil does not want this. But this says nothing. It is the good that possesses the strength that wounds evil. So when, when somebody says, I... Uh, uh, my own family says this to me. I'll only believe the divine will when the Pope says that he believes it. I said, the Pope has already said he believes it. How? He's promoted Louisa to be a servant of God. And now the Vatican has said, everything's ready for the miracles. So if you want to wait for the miracles, you're wasting your life. And they go, well, only when the Pope tells me, will I do that. Oh, God bless you. You know, have a great time. You know, see, God wants us to advance. He, you know, see, when you learn about the divine will, you're, you're, in the, you're basically uh, pre-born. When, when you begin to live the divine will, you're, you are in first grade. You know, as you begin to study the divine will, you enter third grade. 
I mean, we're, we're not very far much along in, this, in what God has given to us. He wants us to have our doctorate in this. And nobody has the doctorate yet but Louisa. He's asking us to embrace this gift of gifts, to know it. So when somebody says, well, that's not going to happen. Oh, yes, it is. Don't worry about it. If it's God is filling us with confidence in him. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. It's, it's, the divine will is so great. It's so amazing. Find 30, 3, 27, 19, 32. I can say that I never tire giving assurances. I speak. I return to speak. I always, with new ways of new truths, of new forms, of surprising similes, always on my divine will. I can never have said so much if it were not certain that my, my kingdom is to have its dominion upon earth. Now, you've heard of dominion, haven't you? <laughs> the devil thinks he's got the dominion. It doesn't. God's got the dominion. I mean, see, God knows this time. Of all the, all, almost all the uh, voting machines are dominion machines. God knows. And it's all lies. It's all AI. And, and every, oh, we're so afraid of AI. Well, let me tell you, uh, Jesus is in charge. And you speak the truth in love. You, we're, we're never on the attack. It's always, our weapons are weapons of love. That's the rosary, the scapular. The book of heaven, the, the, the newest weapon that God has given us is the titles. When you read the titles of Louisa, no matter if you're, if any difficulty, open up the book of titles and just point and you go, wow, that's, that's a human. That's Louisa. And I'm with Louisa. This is what God is calling me to. This divine attribute that he gave to Louisa. He wants to see in me. Everything, knowing Louisa is, is the, the saints, the saints didn't know Louisa, but knowing Louisa is, is so great. Uh, Father Bucci would say, even when his dead brother was brought in and put in the arms of Louisa, Louisa looked at the, looked at the mother weeping on the floor and said, feed him, he's hungry. There's no fear. There's no anxiety, there's no complaints, there's no negativity. God is in charge. And that's what Louisa teaches us in all situations. You know, and we're gonna be put in some really tough situations, but if we're afraid and shaking, our knees are shaking, there's not enough confidence in God yet. We've gotta be able to stand in silence, fully confident in God, no matter what we're being threatened by. I mean, they're saying the, the, what's this, this bird flu that's coming. That's, they say that's, that's the one that's going to kill everybody. The Holy Spirit already said, don't do this. You know, I remember in 1976 when they said, you got to get the shot. I said, well, are you sure this is going to cure the, 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 the virus or whatever? And they said, no, no, it's only 13% sure. Why, why would you take it? Why would you take a 13? I'm going to get on this plane, and only 13% of this plane is going to function when we get at, at 3,000 feet. I'm not getting on that plane. See, the, the, the Holy Spirit is, is leading, guiding, and directing, and we have to hear the Holy Spirit, not our fears, not our doubts, but our trust in Jesus our confidence in Jesus. Wait till you see what's coming. It's so, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. And he's asking us to experience this. We're going to witness the greatest thing God has ever done since Adam. He's going to breathe into humanity. That's what he's doing right now so that we can be in God's image and likeness again. That's why he created us so that we can participate in God as our lady said to Bruno in 1947. 
He says, my children are going to enter eternity where they belong. What does that mean? We don't belong here. Well, I got to have this and I got to do that. And I want to make sure this is okay. We're, we don't belong here. We belong, she says, in eternity. Where we belong, she said. And why? To enjoy the beatific vision. That's why we were, we were created. We were created to be in awe of God for all eternity. How great our God is. How beautiful our God is. How holy our God is. We're going to participate in that. And so God gives us little, little things like the Holy Eucharist. He said, who wants to begin this intimacy with me? And those are the ones who spend time with him, not reading a book, but falling in love with him. Can you imagine you go to your grandmother's house and you walk in with your book? Hi, Graham. <laughs> My time's up, I gotta go. Bye, Grant. I mean, that's not very friendly. It's not very kind. When you go to in front of the Blessed Sacrament, you're there to fall in love with him. You're not there to punch a clock, time clock. Falling in love with Jesus, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Falling in love with Our Lady, that's what we're supposed to be doing. The new Adam and the new Eve. So Jesus says, Volume 30, 20, 327, 1930. I can say that I never tire giving assurances. I speak, I return to speak uh, with always new ways, new truths, new forms, surprising similes. That's when, you, when you're in front of the Lord, he's always there to, to give you more. It's, not, it's never the same. Always I make a bind I And he says, I would never have said so much if it were not certain that my kingdom would have its dominion upon earth. Therefore, it is almost impossible that a speaking of mine so prolicious, I can't say the word, a sacrifice of yours so continuous would not have the longed for fruits of the part of God and the part of humanity. Therefore, continue your flight in the divine will. This, this flight where? To heaven on earth. And that fiat has the power to make its way to knock down all your difficulties. And by tint of love, to make of it, of it its fiercest enemies, its most faithful friends, its most faithful defenders. That's us. I am 30, 5, 15, 1932. I am always back in the supreme fiat, feeling in me the, the sweet enchantment of divine light, of divine peace, of divine happiness. Oh, I would wish the whole entire world would know a good so great, so that all may pray for its kingdom to come upon earth to reign. God has to reign as Lord and King. But while I was saying this, I thought to myself, if the living and the divine will is such a gift that he must give it to the human generations, and Jesus so much loves and wants and longs for this divine will to be known in order to let it reign, why then does he not hasten to give this gift. Now, this is a question. And my highest good Jesus, visiting my little soul, in all goodness told me, my daughter, you must know that even though I burn with a desire to see my divine will reign, yet I cannot give this gift, not before humanity, with all the truths that I've manifested, as they come to know them, have the great good of forming the sight to be able to see what this is, in order to be able to comprehend the divine will. Therefore, to dispose themselves to receive a gift so great. We have to get ready for this. He's given us the keys to the car, but we're still immature. We're not gonna be able to drive it. This, this kingdom of God, he wants us to have this deep understanding of what this is. It's the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. It can't be said that the eye in order to see and the capacity in order to comprehend it is now missing. And therefore, first, I, God, manifest many truths on my divine will. And as the creature comes to know these truths of mine, they shall form the eye socket in which to place the pupil and animate it, animate it with sufficient light to be able to look at it and comprehend this great gift that more than a sun in the sky 
shall be given and entrusted to them. So to give today the gift of my divine will, that more than a sun in the sky shall change the lot of the human generations would be like giving to it to the blind. Giving it to the blind would be like giving them useless gifts and useless things I know not, not how to give. We are tr the triumph God. Our supreme being act like a father who would want to give a great gift to his little son. And the father calls the little one and shows him the gift and saying to him, this gift is prepared for you. It shall be indeed be yours. But he does not give it. The son remains surprised, captivated to see the gift that his father wants to give him. And remaining around the father, he pleads with him to give him the gift. And he's unable to detach him detach from him. And he pleads and he pleads again. Fourth, he wants the gift. Meanwhile, the father, seeing him around, takes the opportunity in order to instruct the son so to make him comprehend the nature of the gift of the good and the happiness that he shall receive from this gift. At the manifestations of the father, the son becomes mature and capable of not only receiving the gift, but of comprehending what good, what generates is enclosed in the gift that he must receive. Therefore, he draws closer around the father. He pleads and pleads again, and he longs for the gift. He reaches the point of crying and can no longer be without the gift. And it can be said that with his pleas and yearnings by acquiring the knowledge of the gift that his father has given him, he has formed within himself the life, the space in which to receive the gift as a sacred deposit. This delaying of the father to give the gift to his son has been a greater love. He burned, he longed to give the gift to his son, but he wanted him capable of and able to comprehend the gift he was receiving. And as, as soon as he sees him mature to receive so great a good, he immediately gives it to him. So do we, God, do. More than a father, we long to give the great gift of our will to our children, but we want them to know what they must receive. The knowledge of the knowledges of it mature our children and render them capable of receiving so great a good. And many manifestations I have, have given shall be the true eyes of the soul to be able to look and comprehend what our maternal goodness has been wanting to give for many centuries. More so, since the knowledges I have manifested in my divine will as they become known by the creatures shall cast into them the seed in order to make filial love, the true love of a child for a parent, to germinate toward the celestial father. They shall feel our paternity and that if he wants them to do his will, it is because he loves them and wants to love them as his children, so as to share his divine goods. So our knowledges on the divine fiat shall make them accustomed to living as our children, and they shall, they shall every, ever marvel and shall even ever, I said, I guess ever, marvel at our supreme being is giving the great gift of our divine will to his little children. It is a right of the children to receive the properties of the father, and it is a duty of the father to give his gifts to his children. One who wants to live like a stranger does not deserve the possessions of the father. More so, since our paternity yearns, longs, burns with the desire to give this gift so that the one may be the will with his children. Then yes, our, shall our paternal love rest when we see that the work that came out of our creative hands on the lap of our will in our house, in our kingdom, populated by our dear children. That's what God is doing. He loves us so much. That's what he is doing. And he needs us. He needs us to cooperate. So what we're going to do is end there. And uh, remember, all the, all the articles are going to be blessed. Uh, I think it's, they're going to be in that back room back there um, uh, at, after, at 3.30 today. Okay, we'll do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so again, begin, begin to see the I love you's. 
Okay. Does everybody see the I love you's in the bricks? Really? I mean, we have, do you guys everybody see the I, I love you's in the, in the slates on the roof? Does anybody see God wants us to recognize his I love you's? Begin to see, hear, smell, taste, and touch all the I love you's all around us. And to praise God and to love God and to glorify God and to worship God. That's our life. That's our life. So let's see you guys working out there. All right. God bless you.